Yo, what's up, y'all? It's Taboo. This is Apple the App, and we the Black Eyed Peace. And our new single featuring Shakira is called Girl Like Me. And you're watching our most requested live Ask Anything chat. That's right. We want to say thank you to Romeo and iHeartRadio for your support. So, Myra from Washington. Uh, I don't want to butcher this city, but it's Tukwila, yeah. Tukwila, Washington. Tukwila. Hello, I just wanted to let you know that I thought the Girl Like Me video was brilliant. We want to thank you, Myra. We want to send love, and hopefully you enjoyed the dance. Rodrigo from Rio de Janeiro, he says, Many of your songs, new songs and old songs, have gone viral on social networks. And you guys have always been very active and connected with your audience. What is the formula to always be successful in social networks, and what do you think about this movement? Um, I think it's always important to connect with your fans, do TikTok videos, and engage. Yeah, it's important for us. You know, we we've uh, we've seen the evolution of the music industry. We've seen you know different platforms and social networks come and go. Uh, the one thing that's consistent is always trying to find new and innovative ways to get the music out and start these amazing challenges and continue, you know, the, the blessing of even though we're not able to tour, we still have our music out and people are, are embracing it and doing the challenges. Cindy from Tulsa, Oklahoma. Do you think it's important that you get powerful and meaningful messages across to your fans through your music? Um, I think it's important for us to always um, talk about what's going on in our surroundings, in our society. So we always try to at least have one song talking about that subject matter. Yeah, we, we uh, are very keen on celebratory type music, music that uplifts your spirits, but also has messaging. Um, songs like Where's Love, you know, that was the song that put us on the map. So we always salute and celebrate and honor uh, being able to have social commentary about what's going on, as Apple mentioned. But, you know, we always bring the party as well. Missy from Atlanta, Georgia. How has the pandemic affected your mental health? Has it been a reflective and healing period or has the uncertainty brought some challenges? Um, I think it's all it, um, I think it's all of the above, but uh, it's always to to face these challenges and always remaining creative, um, using, for us especially, mu uh, using music as an outlet to express ourselves since we can't tour or perform in front of you guys. So we utilize creativity and music to express ourselves and keep our mental health healthy. And for me, I would say that, you know, being able to continue working, uh, not only on music, but also writing, creating, um, staying connected to my family, home base, so that I can uh, see the development and the evolution of my kids, uh, and just being present in their lives. You know, just the the small things that we're learning how to adjust to with social distancing when it comes to learning, uh, having classes online. So those are the type of things that for them, I know it's stressful. Uh, sometimes the fatigue kicks in, but it's just uh, learning how to uh, to embrace those moments and learning how to work through it as a family. Isabel from Simi Valley, California. What was your childhood and high school years like? How has it influenced your music? So my childhood was amazing because I had a huge influence. My grandmother was a person that kind of inspired me to become a dancer, entertainer, and uh, it was something as, as nurturing and supportive as her giving me that energy to go after my dreams and my aspirations. And along my way, I started really fine tuning my skill as a dancer, um, started really researching and being a student of different styles, but I gravitated to hip hop, freestyle dancing, uh, 90s style dancing, and before that I was a b-boy, uh, breaking. So for me, it's, it's always been a uh, part of my DNA as a dancer, as a performer, and as an artist to bring on the tradition, you know, and fortunately I met Will and Apple who had the same type of approach, the same type of love and interest into dancing, which translate into the style of music that we create because our stuff lives in the clubs, it lives on the dance floor, people embrace it, and that's how it's been influential in our lives. Yeah, not only, um, not only going to school in high school, we also had music on the side after school so we would have just combined it all together and, um, you know, 
um, during the weekends, we would do shows here and there to create a following. And uh, so, you know, our lives is always surrounded with music and dancing and creativity. Penny from Minneapolis, what's your definition of rock star? I think um, the definition of rock star for me is to be able to do what I love, which is music and performing on stage. And, uh, you know, that, that provide that, that freedom and that creativity and, you know, to be able to support my family and uh, to bring joy to, to people, especially uh, during the pandemic, to bring joy and, and escape. I think that's a rock star move. Emily from Mount Carmel, PA. Will you guys ever offer meet and greets at your shows? You know what? I'm going to say we're going to be mindful and very safe when it comes to meet and greets. They, they're they going to be different. I'm seeing, I saw Maluma doing a meet and greet where mm -hmm. he was like on a different, on an opposite side of somebody. And there was a, a painting right in the middle. So, you know, just being mindful. We know that we're we're living in day and, day and age of, of being ma masked up, having the, you know, yeah. the pure hell and yeah. all that stuff. So just being yeah. mindful and safe. Yeah, I think by following certain rules and uh, being safe and uh, we, we're always open to it as long as we're all everybody's safe and we're all messed up. Eileen from Tampa, Florida. Peace and love from Florida. Peace and love. How has COVID quarantine changed your perspective on performing? Um, it hasn't really changed the way uh, I approach uh, performances, but it all it it did it did make me dig deeper and use use a lot of imagination uh being up on stage because uh most of our shows right now are virtually um done so you kind of have to picture like there's an audience there and you gotta bring up that inside imagination and you gotta picture that there's a crowd there and you gotta bring that energy yeah i would also agree with that and i would add that you know, unfortunately, we haven't been able to perform our new songs that, you know, like Mamacita and, and uh, Girl Like Me and Vida Loca and all these new songs in, fr in front of a, uh, a live audience. Right, right. So it's like the energy, we still haven't explored it yet. So we're excited to see what the future holds. We know we have these songs that are that are success and, and we, we just were excited for the future. Kelly from Morgantown, West Virginia. What age stands out as a major turning point in your life? What age? Well, for me, it's, it, it was at age 14. Um, that's when I first got to America. I was adopted from the Philippines and brought over here and met my best friends, which is Will I Am and Taboo. And uh, we started everything, so at the age of 14. For me, one mm. of my major turning points was just recently, I was... Uh, Diagnosed with cancer in 2014, and I beat cancer. Um, and one of the driving forces, besides my wife and my kids, was knowing that I could be performing again with my brothers, Will and App. Um, that was a turning point in my life, not only for overcoming this horrible disease, but also for having my brothers on my side, uh, championing me to get over it. Catherine from Okala, Florida. What are your favorite meals to cook while you're at home? I'm gonna let the chef talk. <laughs> <clears throat> well. Other than chicken adobo, which is a Filipino dish, I've recently learned how to cook paella, mm. and uh, so I'm getting uh, this. I'm, I'm getting better at it. And um, what else? Uh, I'd say breakfast. Since we've been uh, recording our new album, we've been in a a bubble, a lockdown, so we all got to spend a lot of time together, like almost the whole day. So. I am the designated breakfast chef. Yo, this man can cook his ass off. Excuse my language, but he cooks his ass off. He, he starts in the morning, and then we have lunch, and then we'll have dinner. So he he prepares the meals, and you know to see him in the kitchen, he's such a scientist and, and an artist. Like he goes to work. It's not just cooking; it's like an art form. So to see my brother transform from being the alligator on stage and on, on the microphone to now being this amazing chef, it's it's an amazing thing. Yeah, yeah, I go vegan and non-vegan. Yeah, because we, we, we our friend, options. our best friend is a vegan, so 
I got some vegan styles too. <laughs> Gina from Raleigh, North Carolina. First off, you guys are amazing. And I love you guys so much. Thank you, we love you too. Now my question, what was your favorite moment while putting together Girl Like Me? Go ahead, Apple. Oh man, it has to be the interaction with the beautiful, talented, strong Shakira. I mean, she's not just a feature, she was truly involved, up and down, side to side, um, from the dancing and the video. Um, we also had a lot of fun uh, shooting the video. You know, we got to uh, um, stay in these like solid um, uh, color scheme and uh, and uh, we, we look good, you know what I mean? <laughs> I felt, yeah. I felt, I felt kind of sexy. I felt kind of sexy too. Yellow jackets <laughs> and stuff popping off. Yeah, we also got to work with Rich Lee, who we worked with uh, in on our previous album. Um, we worked with him on a song called uh, "Rock That Body." I'm gonna be rocking that body. It was it was a dope video, Ooh, right? Yeah, that was like a mini movie. Yeah, it was a mini movie, and we got to you know fight against these robots, and we we're all futuristic, three thousand and eight looking. So it was great to work with Rich Lee once again on "Girl Like Me." Christy from Chicago, Illinois. Best advice another rock star has given you? Another a, an advi a great advice another rock star gave me was to always give your 110% when you're performing on stage. To always engage the, the audience and connect. Yeah, I remember we were, I forgot what award show, and we first met rock, uh, Ray Kwan. Yeah, yeah. He's like, yo, keep networking. Oh, Remember he yeah, told us that? Yeah, He's like, yeah, keep yeah. networking. That's right. And we had just started our, our career. Like we had, I think we just put out joints and jams. But that always stuck with me, yeah. what that meant. You know, if you really think about keep networking, keep ne networking, stay out there grinding, yeah. that whole essence of uh, staying connected to your, your people and your peers to always continue pushing on, that, yeah. that stuck with me. Zoe from League City. What zoo animal would you have as a pet? I like Black Panthers. I don't know why. It's just something about Black Panthers that are super fresh. And I know they're, you know, there's a predatorial type uh, uh, stigma with them, but I think they're majestic animals. Uh, I don't know. I don't have uh, a monkey. Yep, <laughs> it is. It is. All right. <clears throat> Lauren from Bowling Green, Kentucky. Who out of the whole group makes you laugh the most? Apple. This dude's <laughs> funny without trying to be funny. He just has it in him. He's like a funny guy, fun-loving guy, uh, down to earth, humble, sometimes a little too humble for his own good. Uh, he, he's not very uh, caught up in you know, the fame or the lights, the glamour. Um, I would say App is the funniest out of all of us. What are you talking about, man? I just want to be popular. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> All right, Linda from Winnipeg, Manitoba. What movie quotes do you use on a regular basis? Ooh, that's a good one. Damn. That's a good one. <clears throat> and I always have this until they ask me about them, right? Yeah, we we'll always, always do this movie. all day. All the time. And all the day, time. man. I'm going to put you on pots and pans. Ooh. <laughs> blood in, blood out. <laughs> uh, <laughs> they got the Big Mac We got the Big Mac Coming to America You know what Forrest We're gonna make some lemon shrimp Garlic shrimp Barbecue shrimp uh, Sweet and sour shrimp Fried shrimp Boiled shrimp Cajun shrimp <laughs> Alright Doreen from White Plains, New York. What's the best perk about being an artist? The best perk uh, is, to be, is to be able to travel the world with my best friends and doing what I love, being on stage and performing the music we created in the studio. Bam! I have to agree with that. Great answer. Darla from Southfield, Michigan. Who do you feel like you know, even though you never met him? I feel like I've met Bob Marley, 
because I could always, I could always, I relate to the songs. I love what he sings about. And, uh, uh, you know, those are some of the, some of the beliefs and, 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 and inspiring words that I wish I wrote. I would say uh, Kel Mitchell from All That, Nickelodeon show, because I, I've been watching Nickelodeon with my kids and I kind of feel like I know Kel, even though, you know, I've only spoken to him once. I, I just feel like I've known him for a long time. He, he's a b-boy from Chicago, loves the dance community. Uh, it's from the 90s, had a hit uh, show in the 90s, and now in 2020, came back uh, to be executive producer of that show. So Kel Mitchell. Karen from Pittsburgh, PA, go Steelers. Are you 2008 or 2000 and late? <laughs> Duh. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> We're in 2040. Right? We're already 20 <laughs> years ahead. Um, yeah, you know, that's, uh, that's definitely a question that a lot of people ask us. So don't, don't feel like you're the only person that's asked us. There's been people that have, you know, pun intended, are you so 2008 or 2008? <laughs> I'm so 3008. Yeah, so it's, it's a funny it's a funny pun. Siri from Minneapolis, Minnesota. Who in the band do you think would be a bad date and why? You don't have I don't think no, nah, I don't think it. it'll be a bad yeah. date cuz we're all gentlemen and we know how to uh cheat um the ladies the right way respectfully and uh yeah i miss going out on a date with my wife <laughs> we used to go to i pick theater and we used to go to like japanese restaurant like i really miss going out on dates with my wife that's it cool phil from fort erie ontario what was one of the first tours you went on as an opening act that you were in awe of the headliner you're not we're what we're not no, headline. what was one of the first tours that we went on as an opening act? And, that, and we were in awe of the headliner. Like, we were like, yo, we're opening oh. up for... I mean, I'd say Smoking Grooves. Oh, that was great. Yeah. It was one of our first tour. And we were on tour with all our heroes. Like, the people we look up to. Like, Public Enemy, to... To Cypress Hill, Busta Rhymes, Busta Rhymes, to White Clef, White Clef, yeah, um, yeah, just just Gang that star. Gang star. Yeah. So just that roster right there, we, I was like, what? You know what I mean? We used to just listen to like records, and now you're on the same stage as your heroes. It was bang. Yeah. I, I would say, I would add on to that by saying when we open up for a tribe called Quest. Ooh. When we open up for Tribe and we had Dave Chappelle with us yeah. before he really blew up, you know, that was amazing because we got to build with Dave and we got to build with Tribe. And another one that comes to mind is when we open up for De La Soul. De La Soul, yeah. yeah that was dope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lyricist Lounge, I think, right? Um, I think it was, it was, uh, uh, it was called the, uh, uh, College tour. College, um, yeah. What is it called? The college tour? Um, well, it was a college campus tour. tour. Campus tour. Yes, the campus tour. There it is. Yeah. All right. Ben from Pittsburgh. Do you remember the first time you ever saw or heard a band doing a cover of one of your songs? Well, for me, the first time I got to go home back to the Philippines and in Philippines, we're known for covering songs and a lot of bands, um, um, you know, I'd go to like clubs and, you know, I've always, I've, I always hear either Bad Boy or I Got a Feeling with the live band. I would say recently, um, Five Seconds of Summer, they did a cover of Where's the Love. All right. Uh, Jennifer from Minneapolis. What beat best represents Black Eyed Peas? Oh, man. <laughs> That's a hard question. I know it is a hard question. Uh, what song, maybe? Yeah, okay, let's say what song. I love all the beats, Yeah. right? Because they're different. Yeah, yeah, all different. Like, 
I mean, we went to so many BPMs, um, different music genres, genres and yeah. and music influence. styles, influence. So, for me, what gets me hype? I mean, all the time. Let's get it started. You know what I mean? Because it, it's like it's hip hop, it's rock, <clears throat> it's got that energy. It's a great show starter. Yeah, yeah. I love that. Um, for me, I'm gonna be biased because I love the messaging. And the song that always, always gets me emotional and choked up is Where's the Love. And that was the first song that the world gravitated to, you know, it was featuring Justin Timberlake on the hook. Um, and the writing, the writing was amazing. You know, the fact that we got inspired by 9-11 and just the whole love concept. Mm -hmm. um, it just, uh, it, it transcends the test of time, so... Christy from Chicago, Illinois, best advice another rock star has given you? Um, uh, having having a, a, a live, energetic type of show. Because, uh, you know, that's the time where you could connect with your fans, with the audience. And um, I was told to always give it 100 or 200% every time. Melanie from Elm Grove, LA. What traits are most important to you in your family? Family oriented? Yeah, it's cool. Right? Yeah. That's what, I mean, that's what we all have as, yeah. even our family individually, your yeah. family. We make sure that, you know, you stay close to your family. Tell them how you feel all the time. Yeah, I would also say like loving and appreciating the cultures. You know, I, I come from a very uh, mixed uh, family because my wife is Filipino, I'm native and Mexican. So we want our kids to understand the beauty of all cultures. So we have inclusivity and appreciation for all cultures. Annie from Toronto, Ontario. What do you love about yourself and each other? All right, so I love App because he is an inspiration for what he means to his country. Um, his story is an inspiration because for him to come from a, a country that, you know, it has humble beginnings. He was working in the rice fields as a farmer to come to the United States and become one of the most prolific, um, inspirational writers, MCs, uh, producers. Um, he has the blessing of a whole people behind him. And for me, I've always looked at that as something that you can't, it's priceless when you're able to be a voice to your people and, and always give back. Um, this dude is, he's the ultimate give back guy. Every Christmas he goes, gives back to his village and it's, you know, a thousand people lined up to, to receive. And he's all about giving, his heart is big. Um, and he's a talented, talented writer, uh, great performer. And uh, I love this guy, he's, he's an amazing artist. Um, <clears throat> what I love about Tab is, is, uh, is for your mentality. Um, he always brings it with him it, everywhere, on stage, uh, through through our music, through his lyrics, and just the way he fought cancer, you know? He, he beat it, and not just beating it, but utilizing his voice to help out other, um, uh, other people that are affected by, by, by cancer and that disease. And uh, I also uh, admire him for um, uh, wanting to help out his, his culture, especially indigenous people that, that needs a lot of help right now. Uh, he recently um, uh, uh, donated water um, to the people in need in, in, uh, in Alaska. So uh, I love that about Tabu. And what do you love about yourself? Oh, uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, 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 I love my muscles. Okay. All right. I love my muscles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, 
I don't know. That's a weird. That's a a love myself. Or what do you appreciate about yourself? A quality that you appreciate? Uh, I don't know. You think you said it? <laughs> what do you love about yourself? I, I would say I appreciate uh, my loyalty to things that I love. You know, I'm I'm very loyal when it comes to my family, to my friends. I know that uh, I've overcome a lot of things, but I didn't do it on my own. You know, I had a strong support system. So I would say my loyalty, uh, my humility, uh, surrendering and knowing that it's not all about me. It's about us and we. Oh, yeah, I know. Okay. I, what I love about myself is always wanting to learn, uh, being open-minded, and remaining a fan of music. Mm. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching Most Requested Live Ask Anything Chat. Thanks to Romeo and all of his support. The new single is called... Girl Like Me. Check it out. Featuring Shakira. Boom.